All right. Hello, everyone. As my screen locks up, today we are going to be talking about biomes of the world. Um, this is from biology, and I went to Khan Academy's uh, website and YouTube page. And I couldn't find anything about biomes, or at least a good resource. Um they had so I'm going to talk about the biomes of the world and you can see them at least the land biomes here we will talk about both aquatic and terrestrial or land biomes. There are several there are several types. There's actually two major types. There's terrestrial and then there's aquatic. Um, first we'll talk about uh, the ones that are on land or terrestrial biomes. Um, and the following slides will help you um, with land with the land biomes or terrestrial biomes and their qualities um, there will be a picture or two on each slide um, to give an example average temperature is about negative two degrees Celsius um, average precipitation is around three centimeters um, the soil characteristics are that it's frozen most of the time. And uh, if you look at the second bullet there, um, it says that the top layer only thaws in summer, which that only lasts about three months. So the top layer of the soil just thaws enough that plants, like the shallow-rooted grasses and the other tiny plants, like the small bushes and trees, um can live in that uh, in that area um, and obviously the limiting factor is the coldness because if it's uh, too cold and you can't grow say um, wheat there because that takes a lot of soil you can't grow that in the tundra because um, you're going to be uh, facing um, that this soil, this layer of soil over here, is only a few inches deep. So that would be like, um, let's just say three inches Okay, so anyway, some of the common animals are the snowy owls and lemmings. I do not have pictures of those, but I do have a picture of an elk or buffalo. I'm not quite sure of that. Um, and this is a very uh, interesting fact. Um, mosqui mosquitoes and black flies only come in the three month summers. Personally, I would love that if <laughs> uh, our flies and uh, mosquitoes only came three months of the year. Um, but unfortunately, in Ohio, they come most of the time, all the time. Now for the taiga. The average temperature is 5 degrees Celsius. Um, and, again, that's really, really cold. Um, the average participation is uh, 4 centimeters, about. Um, the soil characteristics is that it's waterlogged, which what waterlogged means and... Um, you might have to check this. Um, 
but it means that the water is backed up and frozen. So, now, the common plant characteristics, hmm, I can't erase that, um, but uh, those are usually conifers, and you can see the conifers in this picture. In fact, it's the whole picture, pretty much. Uh, put a nose there, and then you'll have a semi-face. Or, uh, coffee, perhaps. I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> um, the common animals are the lynx, uh, the snowshoe hare, and the caribou, which we saw is uh, caribou elk right here and uh, then the major limiting factors are the harsh winters and the nutrient poor soil now um, you couldn't go out and uh, grow something that needs a lot of soil nutrients uh, in the taiga you could only grow stuff that could live through the harsh winters and also live through the crappy soil. So, that is the taiga. The desert. Uh, the average temperature is around 75 degrees Celsius. Average precipitation is one centimeter. That's about. Um, the soil characteristics are obviously dry, or we could not have these really, really cool sand dunes. Um, the common plants are the cactus and the tumbleweed, which I do not have pictures of, unfortunately. Um, common animals are uh, the diamondback, rattlesnake, and snake. Rattlesnake, yeah. Rattlesnake and the desert tortoise. Now, this is a desert lizard right here. So we'll call him the D. Liz, or something like that. Um, and obviously, the little the limiting factor is the little rain. You can't obviously grow crops out there that uh, takes a lot of rain in some place that only gets around one centimeter of precipitation. And a cool fact right here. Um, in order for an area of land to be considered a desert, it has to at, it has to receive at least less than 10 inches of water a year. Now, personally, I believe that the one centimeter deal is definitely a lot less than 10 inches. Next is the... Um... I kind of put two pictures together here. Um, we'll get to that here in a moment. Average temperature is 17 degrees Celsius. Precipitation is 15 centimeters. So characteristics is highly nutritious. What this means is that we can grow crops here. It's a very, 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 very good place to have a farm. And you'll see that the common plants are grasses, oats, and grains. Um, common animals are the bison and prairie dogs. And um, what's weird um, about grasslands is it has like three different names. Uh, in Africa, it's called the savanna. In America, it's called the grassland or the plain. In Ireland, it's called the plain. Um, and that's where, uh, oh, and it's called prairie. That's right. Um, and that's where, obviously, the prairie dogs get their name because they are on the prairie or grassland. 
and here are some bison or elk well the bison are in the background the elk is in the front ground uh, foreground my bad uh, limiting factor is the long cold winters and the cool fun fact uh, for this biome is over one quarter of the earth surface is covered by grasslands believe this um, because I I can't wrap my head really around this because if 75% is the ocean and we'll get to that in a little bit then how is 25% of it grasslands plains prairies or savannas you know and that's just a quick thing to think about We have our little frog here. Um, the average temperature is 12 degrees Celsius. Average precipitation is 50 centimeters. Wow, that is a huge change. Um, and the major plants are the hardwood trees. Sorry for the really crappy drawings. Um, I am using a ergonomic standard mouse so sorry about all the crappy drawings um but the hardware trees include the uh oak and the maple trees and this also includes um the other larger trees that are also considered hardwood but i couldn't fit all of it in uh the soil is very nutritious um which means that plants can grow here uh, hardwood trees can grow here, um, and it is a very, very, very uh, good place to grow nature, but not to grow like a farm, uh, not to build a farm, I guess I should say. Uh, common animals are bear, squirrel, and salamanders, uh, and the limiting factors are the rainfall and temperature. A fun fact from this, another kind of forest is a temperate rainforest, and I got this from a direct place. Uh, temperate rainforests are found in California, Oregon, and Washington in the U.S. These forests are made from redwoods and sequoias, which are the largest trees in the world. Now, my grandmother uh, went to California uh, a little while ago. I think it was early last year, pardon me, and she saw a sequoia that was as big as the World Trade Center, probably, I would say, because she took a picture of it, and about three people wide, and it had caught on fire, but... It was still standing because where they were had a huge wildfire. So I just think that this fact is amazing about the largest trees in the world. Tropical rainforest. Uh, you've seen probably you've probably seen games that deal in the tropical rainforest. Let me get my mouse around here. And this is right there where I just drew the really weird thing. Um, average temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. Average precipitation is 203 centimeters. Holy crap. This is a lot. Um, the soil. It's too wet to support certain types of plants. So what do we do? Well, I'll talk to you in probably the next slide about that um so that's uh too uh wet to support the plants and bambooza the different plants that usually live in the tropical rainforest are like the bambooza tilde tilde which is the bengal bamboo cocos nefirkia 
I think. I'm pretty sure I'm slaughtering all these really weird names. Uh, the Coconut Tree and the Fiscus SSP. The Bayan Tree or Strangler Figs. Um, the animals that usually live here are the Bengal Tiger, African Forest Elephant, and the King Cobra. Wow. Didn't see that Here is the King Cobra. Right here. Although it is in a desert, if you look here, it looks like it's a desert. So, if it is, not sure. Just got the picture off the internet. Blame them. Uh, the limiting factors. Uh, the need for adaption in uh, plants to be able to grab the nutrients uh, from the soil before the rain washes it away. Because there is so much rain, the plants need to be able to grab the nutrients out of the soil before it gets washed away from the rain so that they can still feed on that. Now, this is a great place to pause and think on how easy our lives is in compared to the plants' lives in the tropical rainforest. Because, you know, we can just go out and I have a bowl of popcorn sitting beside me. Um, and we just make a bowl of popcorn, but in the tropical rainforest, they have to try and grab that. So it'd be like someone throwing a bag of popcorn in the air, and you trying to grab every little piece before it hits the ground. So, just a little something to think about. Um, rainforests get their names, uh, because, uh, they receive a lot of rain, an average of 80 inches, or 203 centimeters a year. That is what we covered in the last slide. Okay, so next. Uh, um, this is very interesting. So, uh, the aqua biome, um, uh, as you can see in this note, I changed the picture in the background, which you can see there. Uh, just to kind of spiff everything up a little bit. Um, so, uh, the biome, the aqua biome, contains two major types of aqua aquatic bleh, places, which is uh, salt water, and the example I have uh, is the ocean, which covers about 75% of the world. Wow! Okay, and then the next place I have is freshwater, and then the uh, example I have listed is the wetlands. Now, I do say that the following slides will cover, da da da, and then we will actually cover, seriously, all of these in the next few slides. Marine, freshwater, wetlands, and the estuaries. Okay, so the marine... So, we have some manatees up here in the corner. Green locks up. There we go. We have some manatees. We have some coral reef. And we have some fish. Which, all this is basically in the ocean. I'm just going to put a really sweet O right here uh, to make it look cool. I don't know, something like that. Um, the, the ocean supports many life forms like the manatee. Give him something to say. Something like that. We have the starfish. Once I find my mouse. And then we have the coral reef, which is seriously everywhere. The temperature varies in the ocean and in all marine 
biomes. Really. Um, due to the salinity and the depthness of whatever you're at. In this example, I put the ocean. And once again, I said that oceans cover approximately 75% of the Earth. You know, and I think black is getting a little irritating. Let's switch to a nice red. And the Pacific Ocean. Ooh, I like this red. Is the deepest ocean measuring in at about 11,000 meters. Now this is crazy. And then the Atlantic and all the other ones are right behind it, but the Pacific Ocean is the deepest. So, food for thought. Okay, here we go. Freshwater biome includes um, the, uh, well, I have it all down here. It includes the estuaries, the streams, the rivers, and the ponds. So all of these, yes, I cannot draw. I'm even looking at it, and I cannot draw. It looks, looks like a bird a little bit. Um, but these are all freshwater biomes. And it's an important part of our ecosystem because it gives life to certain, sometimes very annoying, animals such as the fly and the mosquito, which is interesting. Um, the animals include the shrimp, shellfish, crane, and small fish. Now we see here... Uh, in this picture right here, right here, we see a goose, we think? No, it is a swan. That is a swan. Now, you also see grass in the background right here. And that is what we call the swamp grass. Um, you also see... Uh, the grass over here, and then a forest, probably a Digivus forest in the background. And you also see the Digivus forest here, and then the waterfall. And then here is an estuary, where you see a little bit of forest in the background here, in the background here, and then a little bit of everything else in the middle. Now here we have little tiny flowers in the pond, like lily pads. Um, and the fun fact for this slide, which is right here, uh, the freshwater biome contains the second most diverse group of plants and animals. Although it's not the largest, this world, sorry, this biome, uh, is the most spread out over the world. So it's not the largest, but it is indeed the most spread out. So if you had, um, let's pull up a little map here. Let's just create one. If you had, um, say, Ohio, and we're just gonna draw this really crappidly. You're gonna have one here, then one over here, and one over here. That's what this is saying. Is that they're very spread out. These freshwater biomes. Which sometimes is good. Um, but it might be better if they were closer. You know, like something like this. Because then we could drink this fresh water. And then put it back into the stream after we cleansed it. But... That has yet to somewhat happen. We're in, like, uh, let me switch to another color. I like this blue. I've been eyeing this blue. Well, we have the desert photo here. We have the lynx here. We have this rainforest right here, which I'm going to try and make. Uh, we also have the uh, 
stream ocean river here we have another stream here uh, we have a coyote here in the deciduous forest or the grasslands whichever and then we have the rainforest we have the tundra and then we have the marine So then we can go to our sources. Now, these, the top three, are actual websites. You can pause the video. Um, and this one is an actual science book. Um, it's a textbook, and it's called The Dynamics of Life, Level Blue. Um, it's from... Wow, this is heavy. It's from Glencoe National Geographic McGraw-Hill. It has three titles, so... Uh, I can give you the ISBN number. And that might help you find it a lot better. Okay, so that is... Zero... Zero... Seven... Oh, it's 007! Cool! Um... Eight... Two... Nine, nine, zero, zero, four. And that is the ISBN number for this book. So that it is easier for you to find if you want to check it out or go to your library. So uh, you can pause the video. I'm going on though, because I'm hungry. Anyway. So we go geography continued and then we have the background template and that is a very long URL sorry couldn't short it and then the presentation was researched and written by me Joe Wolfboy it's produced on YouTube and the wolfboy.net player in part by JMS Productions video direction and publication copyright and copy 2012 from JMS Productions. You can visit us at jmsp.webs. I forget the S. Com. And it disappears into the ocean. So, jmsp.webs.com. That link should be in the description. Um, all rights reserved. That's it. Um, I want to thank everyone for watching, and I am sorry it got this long. Uh, sorry for any technical issues, and you all were awesome. Hit that like button to show me that you love me, and also hit that subscribe button. Uh, that will help me out a lot. Um, also, click any of those share buttons after you hit that like button um, to kind of help me out. Um, uh, sharing this video because that would be really awesome um comment tell me what you think um check out more in the description subscribe like and until next time thank you for watching this is joe wolfboy signing off